Hey everyone and welcome to this video. In this video we are going to look at how to start a TypeScript project in 2023 from scratch including lint tools, testing and TypeScript development tools in general. So this is going to be a basic TypeScript project but it's still very valuable. So first let's get started into how do you create a TypeScript project. So what I want you to do is you open your terminal and then you go to the directory where you want to create the project. So you're going to run mkdir to create a directory and then let's call it ts stars. Once you have this created, you can cd into the ts stars and then you can open this into vs code. Now you can open vs code and open this folder directly there or you can just go from here. So here I'm going to just open this into VS code. And now once we have this, I'm going to run the terminal from the VS code itself. So let's quickly go there. So here I've opened this in the VS code. Now I can actually go and open this from here. So I go to terminal, new terminal, and I should be able to see the terminal being opened right here. So since we are working with a TypeScript project, I'm going to be working with Node.js to work with TypeScript. So here what I want to run is uh, npm in it and once you run it, it will ask you some questions. Now you can use the default values by just running npm in it y or you can run npm in it. Once you do so, it's going to ask you some questions like the package name, you can select the default values for example version, description, entry point, test command should be test here and then git repository leave it empty. Uh, this could be TypeScript, comma, web development comma if you want your name there you can add it once you've done so you can add the author so i can say mohammed asan ayas and here i can say asan or github.com slash asan ayas and you can put the entire url if you want here so that's the usual practice that i do when i'm creating some projects so https github.com asan ayas and once you're done with this then you can say mit which is the usual license that everybody uses which means that the code here is allowed by everyone to use okay now you can say yes and you will see that a package json appears in my uh, source code or the directory now that i have the project created i want to install some packages to be able to start working with typescript so first of all create a new folder and name it source src inside you can name index.ts this is a very common name for typescript projects so by default we call them index.ts or app.ts or main.ts i'm going to use index.ts here so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to create a message so let's say message of type string and here i have a message that says hello world by sn and then what i do here is i just console log the message property now you will notice that here this type is actually the TypeScript type because JavaScript doesn't have it, right? Now when I want to run this file and have something on my console using Node.js, I can't do it with TypeScript because TypeScript doesn't run on Node.js. What runs on Node.js is JavaScript. So any TypeScript code that we run either on Node.js or browser has to be first transpiled into JavaScript and then JavaScript runs there. So we don't have a JavaScript file. How do we do that? The easiest way is to run npx tsc, which basically runs the TypeScript compiler and it generates a index.js file automatically. So it will ask if it uh, you want to install it. And once you do so, it will basically run. Now, once we run TSC by default, this is the error that you're going to get, which means that we need to install the TypeScript package into our project. So what do we want to do now? We want to install TypeScript. So npm install. And since this is a development time tool, you can use the save dev for TypeScript. And here you are going to install TypeScript just like this. Now that I have this, now I can run the same command and let's see what happens when I run this. Now you can see that it ran and it did not complain about anything at all. If I open SRC, I don't see anything still. And the reason for that is when we run TSC, we need to tell it which files to work with. So you are going to run npx TSC and here we need to give them the file path. So SRC and then we can say something like, I mean, for starters, we can just say index.ts. And if we run this, it's going to create a build of the index.ts that you can see right here in index.js. Now, if I open this, you can see that the, the thing created here or when it got transpiled, we have var here. And if you are a JavaScript developer, you would be like, no, 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 we don't work with var. We only want let and cons because it's 2023, it's the modern world, no vars. 
And you're actually right. But the problem here is that when we run TypeScript, it doesn't understand which target to use for the compilation. And we don't have a way of telling this yet. So what we want to do is we want to create a TypeScript config file so we can work with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run npx tsc dash dash init, which essentially creates a TypeScript configuration file for us. And if I go here, you can see the target by default is 2016, module is common JS, and it has some settings done, but we are going to modify those still. So I'm going to delete this index.js. And now if I go to TS config, and if I try to search the target, you're going to see that the target is ES 2016. If I go here and select ES next, let's see what happens. I'm going to run the npx tsc source index ts. Let's see what happens. So now if I go here in the JavaScript file, you can see it still says var because nothing got applied yet. And the reason for that is we are running tsc from the npx. It's, it's a bit different. So what I want to do actually is I want to go to the package JSON and inside here, what I want to do is to create a build script. And in here, we are going to let the TSC magic happen. So TSC, SRC, and then we are going to say dot, dot TS, which means that run TSC on any folder having a file or any file in any sort of folders within the source folder. So if there were multiple folders nested here and we had a TS file inside those nested folder, that would also work. So now that we have said this, what I want to do is I want to do two things. In TS config, you're going to try to find the root dir and we need to tell TypeScript to pick the source folder as the root. Secondly, what you want to do is to also say out dir, which means where the output is going to go. So right now the files are created right besides the TypeScript files. We don't want that. We want the files to be inside the dist folder. So I'm going to actually say here that this is supposed to be dist. Now I can delete this. And now instead of running the npx tsc, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the npm run build command. So now if I run npm run build, you're going to see that it will create the build correctly. And it says here source tsc not found. Let's see. Okay. So since we are using ts config file, we don't even need to do it. So let's ignore that one. And now if I run the build, it will generate based on the ts config. So it looks into the src file and it outputs on the dist folder. My bad. Now, if you look at here, you're going to see that we are using the strict mode. We are using cons. Everything is amazing. And it uses the TS config JSON that we have created. Now there are multiple options here. I'm not going to go into those, but we have a way right now to actually work with JavaScript because this is compiled. Now we can run this. So what do I need to run this JavaScript file? I just need to do node dist, and then I can select the file index.js. And if I run this, you can see hello world by SN. Yay. Now the thing is when we are building this application, this requires us to code in TypeScript, build the JavaScript file and then run it via this script. That is like three different steps. But what if we had a way to actually work with TypeScript and run TypeScript somehow? Now the reality is technically TypeScript doesn't run on Node.js. We always have JavaScript but we can use some packages so we don't have to run all these commands ourselves. How do we do that? First of all, what you need to install is a package called TS node. And then along with that, we are going to run something called node mon. We're going to use it and combined, we will have a developer experience, which is much better. So how do we do this? We do NPM install save dev TS dash node. And then we want to use the node mon. And once we do so, you're going to see here that if I go here, now I should be able to see both the packages, nodemon and TS node. So what I want to do now is I want to use nodemon with TS node. And there's a particular way of doing that. So let me quickly show you. And before I do it, if you found this video useful so far and you find it interesting, make sure to go to my GitHub, which is github.com slash SNIRs and give a follow. Join the 800 plus people who are already following. So you can keep up with the projects that I'm working on. Having said that, if I just go and try to search for a nodemon TypeScript, you're going to find this really cool article by LogRocket. And if I go here, the only thing that we want to do is to copy this nodemon JSON so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this one, which has a TS node inside it, and we just need to use this. So if I go back to my code and if I go and create a new file here called nodemon.json, I can paste the code right here. So notice that what we have here is 
an object having exact map using TypeScript TS node. Now what I need to do is in my package JSON, I'm going to go and create a script for dev. You can use dev, you can use a start. It's up to you. I like the dev one so I can uh, differentiate between when I need to start the production build versus dev. So I'm going to use here nodemon space src and let's put a dot slash here and then index.ts because that's our starting application or starting point. This is now going to work directly with TypeScript. So we are we are doing two different things. First, instead of node dist index.js, we are running nodemon. So instead of node, it's nodemon. Nodemon keeps running your application on and on. If you change your file, it's going to restart the server automatically. So we don't have to build it again. That's the developer experience. And then running index.ts via the TS node package is what enables us to actually directly uh, say to nodemon that, hey, look it into this TypeScript file, not the JS file. And now if I go and run npm run dev here, let's see what happens. In this case, you're going to see that it ran nodemon and now there's the output, hello world SN, and now it says waiting for the changes before restart. And this is amazing now because I can go here and just remove this. And as soon as I save this file, you're going to see that this restarts the server and now we have hello world here. So this makes it really easy for us to just work with these things without the hassle of building the file again and again and then running the JavaScript file via node. So this is a really good developer experience. Now that we have this done, let's talk about linting. So we do want our code quality to be good in a TypeScript project. And for that, we can use something called ESLint, which is one of the most popular tools for making sure that you your entire code base follows a particular standard. And if there are any mistakes, it fixes them or it highlights them for you. So now if I want to use ESLint with TypeScript, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go to Google and here I'm going to say TS ESLint. And once you go there, you're going to find this really cool page, which is this. You go to get started. And here are some of the things that I want you to do. So first of all, copy this command, which installs a couple of packages, including TypeScript ESLint parser, TypeScript ESLint, the ESLint plugin, ESLint itself and TypeScript. We already have TypeScript installed. So even if we install all of it, it won't replace what we have. So if I go here and if I try to stop the server, I can install the TypeScript, ESLint parser, blah, 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 all of the packages I can install. And then I can start working with ESLint. So if I go back here, this is an ESLint RC JS file that we need to create. Now here it says CJS, which is common JS, but we are not going to use common JS. We are going to use the ES modules, which is ESM. So I need to create the ESLint RC.js here. So I'm going to go back to my code and here I'm going to say N, no, not N, but ESLint RC.js. Inside here, I'm going to paste the code. So here I should be copying all of this. I'll go here and paste it. And now that I have pasted it, I can see some errors already. Now here you can see cons parsing error. The keyword cons is reserved. I don't know why that was there, but now it's fixed. But if I go ahead and I do something like npx eslint dot, which is us directly using the eslint package from uh, npm. You're going to see that here we don't have any errors whatsoever. Now let's introduce some errors so we are sure that if there are errors, we can see them in VS code and when we run the lint command. So if I go here, I'm going to run, I'm going to create a class that I'm not going to use. So for example, I can say class calculator and here we have a class that I'm not using anywhere. Then I have a get, I can say default val and then I have a getter but I don't really return anything from here. Now I have two errors. One. The calculator is defined but is never used. Now this ESLint is actually our VS Code extension for ESLint. So you need to go here in the extensions and search ESLint and then you will find the extension and then you need to install it. This is from Microsoft. So our VS Code finds it but if I try to run the same command with the lint package or the ESLint package that I already now have in my package JSON, this one, it wouldn't show it. And let's see what happens. So I'm going to add a new script here. This is called lint and this is really important because when you push your code to, for example, GitHub, Bitbucket, Jenkins, where you're deploying some stuff, you would want to run the lint there as well. So it's not your machine. It's not your VS code. So we want a lint command that we can run in any environment and it should show the exact same errors that I'm seeing on my VS code. Otherwise, it's going to be confusing because I see some errors, but the lint doesn't do it. So if I do something like ESLint 
And here I need to make sure that I, I tell it, for example, to look into different things. So ESLint should be looking into anything that is inside SRC and is a TypeScript file. Now that I have this, I can run npm run lint and let's see what happens. It ran ESLint and you can see that there, there is a warning, but let's ignore it for now. But you can see that there is absolutely no error. And the reason for that is in here, in the ESLint, we don't have a situation right now. And I'm going to save this file, close it, open again. And here you can see still the same errors. So the problem here is that we have an ESLint RC JS file. We have the lint setup but it uses two different packages and this one gets more priority. So that's why there's a description or discrepancy about what happens. So I'm going to actually remove or not remove, but swap these places. So I'm going to move this ESLint package to afterwards. Now, if I save this and if I close this, now you're going to see something different. First, if I open the index.ts file again, we have another error that says console is not defined. We'll fix that later. Now it's the same thing that happens to every developer. You try to fix one thing and then you get another thing and then you're like, Argh. anyways. So now we have three errors that we need to fix. Console is not defined. Calculator is defined, but never used. And then we have the default value should return something or the getter should return something. Now, if I run npm run lint, let's see what happens. You will see that it will get the exact same errors. First console is not defined. Then we have calculators defined, but never used. Now, since we are using two packages in ESLint, the TypeScript recommended, ESLint recommended, both of them actually throw the same error. So this is just duplicate, but you don't have to worry about it. They're mentioning the same line numbers as well. And the third one is expected to return a value and get a default value. Now this is the same linting errors as what we have in VS Code. And this is great because now there's consistency. Now the question, why is console not understood by ESLint. And that is because ESLint does not know what is the environment that this TypeScript file is going to run on. And we know that this is Node.js. So all you need to do is to add an env file here or env entry here. And here you're going to say, Hey, node is true, which means that now it's going to understand what is console. So you can see that now there's no error here. VS code is happy, but is my lint command happy as well? Now, if I run this, you're going to see that the console error is gone. We only have three problems. That is three errors and we need to just fix those. So since this is the code that I'm not going to use, I'm going to actually remove this. That means I have no errors in my index.ts. VS code is happy. And if I run the lint command, everything should be good. I will not see any errors whatsoever. Cool. So now our ESLint is working and now I can scale my application, add a bunch of files to it and it would still be happy. Now that we have the lint setup, let's talk about the testing because we should always test our code. So in this particular case, we have the message here and I'm going to refactor this a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call this get message and this message should essentially return uh, a string and I'm going to remove the console log from here. So here I can go ahead and say something like uh, console log and I'm going to call this method instead. So I would expect this get message to return me a string, which I will then console log here. So this means this needs to return uh, the message. Now, the question is, why am I doing it? Because I want something to be tested. So what I'll test is if I run the get message, do I get the string back? Hello world. And I'm going to change it to hello world by SN so we can test it well. So this is what I want to do, right? Now, if I want to run tests, I need a testing framework. So you have many choices out there. You have Mocha. You have uh, Jest, you have more. I'm going to use Jest. And since we are using TypeScript, I want to use the TypeScript Jest version. So what I want you to do is go back to your browser, search for TS Jest, and then you're going to get to this website and you can then just do get started and here installation. So we install a bunch of packages that includes again TypeScript, but we want to install Jest, TS Jest and types Jest, all three things. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go back to my terminal, paste this. And now I should be installing all these packages. Once this is going to be installed, we are going to write our first test and our only test. And then we are going to see if this works at all. So once you have installed this, the next step is to create a config for Jest. So we need to run npx ts jest config init. So I'm going to go back to my terminal and I'm going to run this command. 
once I run this, you're going to see that we are going to get a just config file created, which is right here. And this sets this environment setting that the testing environment is node and the preset is TS jest, which allows jest to work with TypeScript. Now that we have this set, what I want to do is I want to create the test. So I'm going to go to source and I'm going to write index.test.ts. Now you can use the spec.ts or test.ts. I'm more comfortable with test most of the time. So I'm going to just use this. And now let's talk about testing. So each test is based on a suit or test suit. Sometimes you call it test suite, whatever. You're going to write describe. And then inside you will say, what is the scope of this test? So the scope of this test is the get message method. So I'm going to just write that. And then the second argument it takes is a callback. So this is what's going to run the test. Then you should have a test itself. So our only test is it should return the right value or the right message. So I'm going to say it should return the correct message when called. So this is our test, right? And the second argument the it function takes is the callback as well. So I'm going to quickly go here, write it, and then we'll write the test. Now, so far, now I'm writing the test, you can already see that we have this issue. What is this squiggly red line? Why is it there? And this bothers us. The reason for that is if you mouse over, you're going to see describe is not defined. And who is telling that? ESLint. So ESLint does not understand what's happening here in this test file. And the reason for that is if you remember what happened with node, it's the same here. It doesn't understand the environment of jest. So all you, we need to do is to say jest true and our test file is now happy. Yay! Developer experience for the win. Now what I need to do is to write the actual test. So I want to work with this get message, but this message is not really exported. So I can't have it in my test file. So first I need to just export this. So I can say export const get message. Now I'm going to go to my test file and then I'm going to say expect and then I'm going to say get message. If I call the get message, I want to say this is equal to hello world, right? Now you can see that I've imported the get message from dot, but you can also write dot index. It's the same thing. Now that I have this get message here, I can run the test. But for that, I need to go to my package JSON and add a script for running the test so we can run it multiple times in our CI CD environment and whatnot. So test is here, but instead of test, I just want to say jest. What is the irony? And now all I need to do is run npm run test. And once I do so, it's going to start running the jest server and it's going to run the test for us. And I hope everything would be fine. So index.test.ts, you can see that it started looking into it. And now one of one total test, one failed. And you can see here the expected statement that we have is hello world, but the actual code returns by SN. So here, if I go to my test TS, you can see it expects to have hello world, but our code returns hello world by SN. Now the question is, should it be hello world or should it be by SN? Since I'm recording the video, it should be by SN. So I'm going to actually update the test. But most of the times you're going to be doing otherwise. You're going to be updating the actual code. So this should be hello world by SN. Now, if I just change this to hello world by, you're going to see that now I have to rerun the test again in order to run the test. There's a shortcut though. So if I go to packages on, I can create another script and I can call this test watch. Now I like to use the colon in my script names, but you can use dash, then you will be doing test dash watch, but I like to use colon here. So here, instead of running jest, I would just run jest watch. And now instead of running the npm run test, I'm going to run npm test watch. And you will see that this will not only run the test, but run it in the watch mode. So this process does not die. Watch no support without the git edgy, please use watch all. Hmm, what do you mean? Oh, is that because we don't have git? I think yes. So let's do one thing. Let's do a git init. And now let's try this again. And then we'll we'll look into a couple of things as well, but don't worry. So just watch. It's going to run the test now. And now you can see that we have the same thing, one field out of one total. But now the error is a bit different because now it's uh, the by is already there. SN is not there. So I can go to my test and expect what my code should return. 
and I've only saved the file, but the process reran, and now we have a test that is passing, right? Awesome. Now you can write more tests just like this, and they would also be working in the same manner. So it should be super smart. And in here we can say expect true to be true. And if I do this, now we should have two tests running. And you can see that the developer experience is re really nice because I don't have to rerun the test every time. So should be super smart, also passes. Everything looks good now. And we have our test running as well. And we have everything else as well. Now, the only thing that I want to do, or uh, a couple of things actually, is first, I want to have this node modules not pushed to GitHub. So I need to create a git ignore file inside which I'm going to write node modules so I don't push this to GitHub and you can see that it turned gray so this is not going to be part of GitHub anymore. The second thing that I want to do is if I run npm run build let's see what happens. So if I run this the TSC should run inside the source folder and we should have the comp compiled files for both index and index test.js. Now if I open index.js you're going to see that we have this file created and we have the test.js as well. Now in the test.js you can see that this is throwing an eslint error. What happens if I run npm run lint at the moment? What happens? So you're going to see that if I run the npm run lint, the linting tool does not throw any errors whatsoever, but my VS code does. I'm not sure why, but I know that if I create a file here that's going to solve the problem and the file is actually a dot eslint ignore and inside that I can say you don't need to run linting on the dist folder because that is the folder that is built. So we don't want uh, the these files to be tested. Have I written this correctly? Yes. If I now go to the test.js you can see that there's no error on the require statement unlike it was before and it is still green and the reason for that is if I go to the git ignore it doesn't include this so we don't want the dist folder to go to github so that's why let's ignore that as well the final thing that i want to show you is how do you debug your code in vs code and for that you just need to go to your run and debug you create a file create a launch json file and then just use node.js what i usually do is that i remove this this one from the configurations and i add my own so this should look empty save it add configuration go to the one that says launch via npm and then change this to for example dev now we are going to run npm run dev so that's how it should look npm run dev and this is the name of it so you can say run dev or restart dev or my dev it doesn't really matter so dev if you save it you're going to see dev right here and then if you click this it's going to run the dev mode using the npm run dev node one starts and in the debug console now you can see we have this running but what's important is here you can see this guy which essentially um, allows you to do debugging so for example if i now go to my index file index.ts i can actually add more code to it for example console.log what is my name and here i can also put a breakpoint now if i save this you can see that now it is stopped on the breakpoint automatically since the uh, the process restarted due to node mon and now i am on this particular line now i can do step over and you are going to see then the output just like this what is my name and now i can also debug here so get message let's actually go into the function so i'm going to do step into it goes inside the function now the message right now is undefined because this line has not been executed if i go forward now i have the message value now it's going to return the message value so it's going to go out of the function and now it's going to console log what we have here so if i mouse over this this should have returned the value of you know the hello world string so if i go forward from here and maybe hit play now you can see hello world by sn so this is how you would debug it now it's up to you if you want to keep this uh, new launch json that we have created it is inside the vs code if you want to keep it so if you clone the repository into your other machines if you want it there then just keep it here a lot of projects actually remove this via uh, git ignore so if you want to keep it you keep it otherwise you just can do vs code and then it will 
remove the VS Code folder altogether. It's up to you what you want to do in this case. So that's pretty much it. Uh, from here, what you can do essentially is hook it up with a GitHub repository. So let's quickly do that. So I'm going to go to my GitHub. Let's go to GitHub. Let's create a new repository. I'm going to create the repository in the code with SN uh, organization. Let's call this TS stars. And in here, I'm going to make this public. Nothing to be added. No readme, no git ignore. Nope, nothing. Just create the repository. Once you're done with that, you can see the commands here. So if there's a new repository, I need to go to git in it. I don't need to do it because I already have it. Now you can see the readme. It's always good to add readme, but I'm not going to do it in this one. Maybe I'll do it later. And then I need to just add all the files and do the first commit. So in here, I'm going to go and say, hey, git add dot, which adds all the files. And if you want to do it from the VS code, I like to do it from here as well. So when you don't do git add dot, everything is inside changes. You can add everything one by one by reviewing everything one by one. When you click it, you can see the changes here. This is what I usually do when I'm I'm committing or pushing my code. So I'm I'm sure what I'm pushing is the accurate one. Once I'm happy with that, I can say plus that is now stage changes. That is the same if you do git add dot. It moves everything from changes to stage changes. And then you can either uh, write a message here, but I like to commit from my console. So I can do git commit here. I can say, for example, sure. I mean, this one is the initial commit uh, and probably also the final commit. Maybe. So once you have the commit ready, you can do a git push. But we can't push because there is no repository linked with it. We have just added and committed. So what you need to do is you need to do this git remote add origin. Once you do this, and this is obviously going to be your repository in your GitHub. So make sure that you replace this with whatever repository you have. And then I just need to do git push you origin main. If I do this now, then I will be pushing all the code to main. So on this very page, if I just refresh, I should have my code right here and you can see it was just pushed now and it has everything that you want to see right here. So it just lacks a readme, which I'm going to add sometime. So having said that, I hope this video was useful for you and you learned quite a lot on how to work with TypeScript. Now this is true for starting, uh, for example, library projects, really small projects or programming katas or something with lead code, for example, when you want to have your your linting tools your testing tools and typescript itself if you found this video useful let me know in the comments and obviously like the video and if you have not subscribed to the channel do that as well let me know in the comments if there are specific topics that you want to learn from me and until the next video happy coding i'm gonna see you in the next one